What's going on guys? It's day two of the Dolomites trip. Now we're at one of the most popular photo locations or just locations in general, Lago di Brais, which I don't know what that means. I'm gonna guess Lake of the Arms. Let's go with that. Lake of the Arms and yeah, it's quiet because November just is not busy here, but there's still lots of fall colors kicking around. Um, and the light's kind of trapped a little bit, but it's still really beautiful. So well, we're gonna head down to the lake and make some photos. <laughs> Okay, we just walked kind of halfway around this lake trying to get an angle for sunrise if we come back for sunrise. But for sunset, with the sun kind of trapped over there, we think the best thing to do is to walk along the edge of the lake and shoot back at these peaks here. I think these are the coolest peaks anyway. You can't really do, you know, the classic Instagramming photo here this time of year because the water level drops so much in this cabin that's kind of the classic is actually almost completely out of water so I think that's a good thing it allows us to shoot something new and different and also I just love shooting this time of year in general everywhere because it's like that shoulder season between fall and before winter where you still get the lakes open but you get a, a blending of winter and fall so this is great After walking around the lake, it feels like a pano. If I photograph vertically this way, everything kind of leans off to the left and empties. There's just nothing there. And the only way that I really feel like the frame is fulfilled is a pano that goes all the way across like this. So I'm gonna go 15 millimeters, vertical frames like this, chopping across the sky. Uh, the light's nice, clouds are moving. Probably we'll put on like a two-stop soft grab ND on the top, but that's about it. There's a reason I don't do panos and it's because I'm very, I, I don't deal well with delayed gratification. I need to see what it looks like now. So the pano seems like the right shot here, but because I can't see it, I can't focus on it. So I've been messing around with some other stuff. There's really beautiful reflections and really beautiful light up top here. And I was just struggling to get foreground interest I liked. So what I've done is actually put my camera right on the water. It's legitimately, my filter is in the water propping up the tripod. I've used a little rock to wedge under the camera to get the camera level. And I'm just using the blurriness of the foreground to create depth in the image. Usually you're finding like a rock or a tree to create that depth. That's the anchor of the image. But when you do it this way, you don't need that. It's natural depth. So even at F16, everything's kind of blurry in the foreground. And no, I'm not going to do like, uh, what do you call that thing? A stack, where I stack the focus. It's not that style of an image. And I think it's working out really well, actually. It's definitely different from what you normally see. And I like it. I might just keep my camera on the ground the rest of the evening. Another thing I'm kind of trying to do is create any sort of interest to the image. Obviously the mountains are nice, but there's not like a really obvious point of interest in them. There really isn't. There's no massive pointy peak. There's no obvious moment. And it means that sometimes the images feel 
either a little bit over full or a little bit unbalanced or unfulfilled totally so again i talked about this over here that i really love this peak but i've been struggling with the fact that it's totally empty over there and the way i'm compensating for it is by doing a really long exposure i've gone up to a full minute exposure and these clouds are just booking it so i'm able to create some sort of interest off to the side here and it makes it feel a little less empty still not great it's just a little less empty and i think honestly i might do the same for this view of this reflection here uh, just to add some you know some fine art drama to the image This was a lot of fun. Again, we didn't really get crazy light because the light gets trapped behind the peaks this time of year. So one thing I've learned is in the winter, the light is always behind the peaks. Every, almost every view we've seen so far has been south facing. And so it's been a little bit tricky to try to get epic light. But when places are beautiful like this, it doesn't really matter. So uh, this was fun again. I'm going to carry this video on to tomorrow morning where we're going to photograph yet another one of these really, really cool locations here in the Dolomites. So let's carry on. We're up early, we've hiked up to Alpe de, Alpe de Suisse, which is a really, really beautiful spot. And I mentioned this before, that I'm loving this shoulder season. You have fall and winter combined with, while well, still having access to a lot of places you couldn't access in the winter. So this is just really cool. Literally just come up here and uh, have spotted these cabins that are special. They're right in front of this beautiful set of peaks. There's a little bit of fall color still in the trees, although not much. Unfortunately though, like every single location, it seems like we're facing south and into backlight. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a challenge even this morning, even in this really special place, especially with no cloud. So I'm taking a photo. I've basically got my normal this is like my Dolomite winter setup. <laughs> it's the 24 to 70, my four stop medium grad ND. And then I put this cabin down here in the bottom right of my frame. I've got the mountain kind of right behind it. And then the road is actually leading away to the left. And that's totally on purpose. A lot of people will be looking for leading lines into the mountains. In this situation, I kind of want to lead your eye away from the mountains kind of to show kind of a story where you can you can kind of imagine driving along that road not into the mountains but along them so there's method to my madness i swear and yeah even with backlight this is just absolutely beautiful Okay, so one of the things I'm realizing with this backlight situation is I have to be shooting well before sunrise. The photo I took was probably 10 minutes before sunrise and already it's way too backlit to be getting proper exposures no matter what I do. You could probably HDR it, but that's just not something I do, um, but you could. I just don't do it. So what I'm finding is that it's actually really nice because it's forcing me to shoot different things other than, you know, the classic views. I'm finding myself turning completely the opposite direction of the classic view.
I just packed up my bags because it's like 20 minutes after sunset, thinking that the light was done, and then Alpenglow is kiss kissing the peak that I was photographing a second ago. It just always seems to happen. I feel like you're pretty spoiled in the Dolomites and the Rockies and lots of places like this because you don't need phenomenal light to make it work, to get good images. The scenery just does all the work for you. So even though we haven't had great light, it's been great and hopefully it continues to be great. I think there's one more episode from the Dolomites coming up. So stay tuned. Peace.